it is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question, and that is to understand a little bit more of a narcissist sort of bait and switch, or what you might consider a, a juggle and hide sort of changing of personas or treatment, especially when it comes to sort of dramatic or extreme ranges, meaning we're getting out of the, you know, normal and we're getting into the ex extreme or abnormal, uh, especially when it causes other people undue, unnecessary harm, um, uh, sort of negativity and sort of what you might consider getting the short end of the stick feeling that you're always sort of rendered helpless, powerless, just things just, you know, are kind of, but they're kind of really not. Um, and people with empathy and a big heart, people who find themselves oftentimes the victim of this sort of narcissistic Jekyll and Hyde, sort of one way and then the other, not knowing what you're going to get, sort of like a box of chocolates, or if you flip a coin, you don't know if you're going to get the happy or the sad or the rage or the vengeful, the harsh, the critical. So there's a lot of these sort of very discordant emotions that come, you know, mood um, instability, um, moodiness, a broodiness, it's the, you know, you know, the uh, sort of feeling that they're not really meeting you in the middle. They're not even meeting you halfway. In fact, you're going to have to throw your back out, your neck out, your teeth out, just to sort of, um, you know, get them on their terms. Because their terms are going to be oftentimes just sort of like a raging bull, where how do you negotiate when someone's just sort of raging at you or charging at you, which you, you can't. I mean... It's very unfair, um, but then how do you navigate these sort of stonewalling, um, these very extreme, uh, rageful, hurtful, hateful things that you might have received as experience or just feeling things are really getting in hot water or very cold water, you know, like you've just, you know, completely um, ended up in an emotional Antarctic or an emotional bloodbath. So we're talking really about these extremes that can be elicited when you have that sort of two-sided Dr. Jekyll and Hyde sort of bait and switch with the narcissist. Realize that the narcissist, you know, they have certain things on their agenda. And usually, you know, they have a certain sense of entitlement or expectation that they only need to associate or be associated with certain types of people, situations, and that quote unquote, other things are underneath them. So there's this tendency to find that they will uh, dish out or leave others with sort of punitive treatment that, you know, you won't be worthy of their time, uh, you know, if as if you don't meet ABC, XYZ, you know, whatever uh, term it is that they're looking for. And those terms are subject to change. So if you think that you're moving along swimmingly with them, and then all of a sudden you find out that they have betrayed you, and then you've forgiven and forgotten, and then you're right back again where you started, you know, it gets more and more intense. It becomes more of a trauma bond, really, where you're, you're really um, sort of lacking in and rewarding this self-deprecating treatment. In other words, you're just nailing it in your own coffin, so to speak, your own emotional coffin. You're just doing your own self in with this. So you really have to realize that, you know, you don't want to send yourself down that chute and to realize and to stop that sort of regressive or fear or feeling of, you know, maybe you've made the right decision and you might as well go back and just keep being abused and it's just never going to change. You know, all these sort of hopeless statements, feeling like you've got the short end of the stick. I beckon you to recognize that you have the long end of the stick. You are, you are not, <laughs> you know, they might, you know, uh, you know, see if you're going to fall for that. But that's where, you know, we're talking about your standards. You know, if you've been, you know, previously 
just sort of thrown under the bus and you've had to sort of be very reactive and protect and justify your reputation and you're finding you're getting into this very um, unstable territory realize that they will change their uh, persona their mask um, what they want for you what they want for you as a uh, as a uh, you know a, a relationship or a work relationship or the family system you know again the promises uh, but yet what really delivers and what co really comes through is what you have to really recognize and if you're given that short end of the stick and you're being disrespected that's really where you have to understand and process this within yourself and and not look to the narcissist for uh, you know, uh, for working this out, you have to call it what it is sometimes and realize that you're, you're not receiving this sort of feeling experience or treatment because you are inferior, less than, not as important, not as smart, uh, the woman, the man, the teacher, the leader, the follower, the saint, uh, whatever it is. Um, it's just how they operate. This is what a relationship with them feels like. It does, it is not personal. So uh, the problem is with that bait and switch is that a lot of people feel that they have turned on, you know, uh, the other, uh, negative mask that, that there was something that they did a grave mistake, uh, a misstep, uh, you know, that they, have a flawed character or something that they deserved this harsh treatment and then for things to you know turn sour go south that they are responsible so they then you know then you know are carrying this around and this could not be further from the truth realize that when you're you're sort of you know having to uh, sort of walk gingerly or on eggshells, uh, tulip shells, uh, rose thorns, whatever it is that you're walking on, you know, maybe you're walking on, uh, you know, ice cubes. I don't know what you're walking on, but when you feel just sort of things are not right, you know, this is, there is something within you that's on point. That's like an emotional, uh, North star, that's like a compass that's trying to say, hey, you know, you're supposed to look around and be part of something that's taking you to the next level. And why are you being squashed? It's like you're in a bed that's too small. You're in a relationship that's too small for you. It's not really the other way around. Realize that oftentimes people attribute all sorts of uh, character assassinations to themselves because they have been treated unfairly. They feel that there are, are they are the cause that creates this harsh treatment. Oftentimes, that is not the case. It's you know um, when you're dealing with someone who has a pathological sense of self-importance and a lack of empathy. You know they're always talking to you like talk to the hand. So they're not really. I'm engaging with you in a respectful level, which you are, are due, you deserve. It's not a luxury. It's not like only reserved for certain people. You deserve respect, period, end of story. So oftentimes there's this violationary energy that sort of gets in the way and that people then are trying to navigate their relationship back to the, the pleasant mask or back to the love bomb. You know, and then people say, oh, I just wish we could go back to where it was. I feel like an open Pandora's box, you know, the jack in the box with this person. And, you know, it's never going back in. It's just uh, all over the place. It's like sprung loose. We'll realize that's because you have to shape and mold it and give it direction. And if things are going in a direction that is driving you nuts, crazy, causing you to break down, lose sleep, be an anxiety, uh, not be able to rest or be at one piece. You know, you have to recognize that if you have then oftentimes probably communicated certain things that have not been listened to. So that's where this sort of confusion, you know, comes in that then people, you know, then attribute it to some, you know, permanent flaw about them. 
and realize and feel that, you know, what could I have done different? And they don't really see that, you know, where the, the erroneous or harsh treatment is and realize that you did not instigate that, provoke that, create that. They might have projected onto you that you are falling short, a disappointment, A, B, C, and X, Y, Z, you know, but oftentimes, you know, they're just, it's kind of like, a way for them to hit and to say, why don't you, you know, they sort of punch you down, beat you up and then say, you know, I need you to be strong after they've just pulverized you. So it's just, it's just like a very strange um, uh, way of relating that is not healthy. And you might have to be a leader in with a relationship with these types of people because oftentimes the psychopath or the narcissist, they want to be the leader. They want to be, you know, the head cheese, the head honcho, the, the boss cow, whatever it is they want to be. But oftentimes without treatment that is warranted of that. So it becomes like a false loyalty or um, a hollowness. Um, and that hollowness is your needs not being met. Um, that hollowness and that fear <clears throat> is that something is going uh, neglected, unattended to, not realized for you. So you have to be able to learn and read your own body signals like a map. And guess what? You know, we're talking about AI, this, that, and the other thing. You know, you better get, you know, um, a readout on yourself, especially when it comes to engaging in social media, because this can, the social media, the high maintenance, uh, Facebook, the high maintenance, uh, this, that pictures, whatever it is, it becomes almost like a new addiction, a new competition, um, where oftentimes, and it's not based on a foundation of, um, a person to person. So like, you know, in other words, there's, um, you know, a lot that can go wrong. And I think if you talk to the younger generation, a lot of them will tell you that it's oftentimes very difficult for them to maintain that outer. And so if you don't like that game, if you don't think, you know, um, and I heard this once again in another uh, podcast or no, it was in a, um, a news story. Um, it's kind of like, I think they were relating to, you know, some things in, um, with our, of course, our presidency, but in other words, they're saying like, you've got your, you know, you're barking up the wrong tree. If you feel that you're still barking up the wrong tree, in other words, you're suffering, suffering, you're not getting sort of that expansive unfolding life with respect. In other words, your cake and eating it too, um, in a relationship and you're able to have things be stable. So you can kind of count on and rely on a person to be and not to cut you down. In other words, you're not gonna make a misstep. Like you're, you know, you're choreographed in some sort of dance that you didn't even know was a dance that you're, if you act one way, say something or do something that somehow you're out of cue, out of choreography, you didn't even know you had this dance script to be prepared for. So they sort of thrust that upon you and then scold you for not knowing how to do the dance. It's just, it's, it does not really um, make sense. It becomes an exercise of futility, meaning it becomes an exercise that does not get you anywhere. And instead then, futility meaning um, uneffective for you. <clears throat> So you have to um, use the role of metacognition, the ability to think about where you think about and realize that there you don't deserve the, the blame, the lambasting, the lashing out, or that other side. Oftentimes, that person is coming from a bad space. It is, you are just sort of observing or witnessing. Many people find themselves in relationships where they're having to be very reactive almost like an emotional sal salamander for these people, becoming like, you know, a fit in uh, a camo, an emotional camouflage to whatever it is that they want to see. <gasps> you want me this way? You know, and then you're living this reactive, just sort of empty life. And, you know, you ain't no trophy. You ain't no rag doll. 
you know, you ain't no beanbag. You have a, a heart and a consciousness. So especially when we talk about AI, I think people are going to be struggling and need to learn what your consciousness is because with a lot of the social media, a lot of that sort of thinking and reacting was inadvertently done for you. If you watch on Netflix, uh, The Social Dilemma, um, you, you know, if you really want to, you know, be up on what's going on, watch that. It is not uplifting. It is informative. Um, if you watch those sort of interviews with uh, the former uh, uh, founder of Facebook, uh, Chamtha, uh, the gentleman, you know, and he talks about his interviews, you really, you know, um, you know, look at um, really sort of coming back to a, a stable you and that an unstable you is even though it might have been valued before you showed up for the drama this that and the other thing you know you were wounded you you know if you've played that too many times and you're afraid that your timing belt on your emotional engine is just gonna go you know you that is okay you need to do a reset you um you know you it is okay you don't need to be reactive and responsive to that. You have to own some stability within and stand by that. Stand guard, you know, almost like you're standing guard. Uh, what do we have here um, in the United States? The unnamed soldier, where there's always a guard sort of watching um, over this. Um, you know, people who have given their life for a country, a cause, you know, um, you know it's a big deal. And, but you have to also keep watch um, on your own um, inner flame. You know, you have to see, you know, when are things really either getting to this or too down, you know, be able to navigate that and then realize that you, you know, can and, and oftentimes be thinking for yourself opposite of that bait and switch. So, you know, if that um, instability did not work for you, realize that that is something more that you can cultivate within and then connect with others from that space. Because oftentimes people will attribute a lot of negativity um, to themselves when they see this back and forth. And they're always sort of trying to get something back. Um, you really have to sort of carry your own torch on this one. You really have to be able to follow through and then feed that um, need within. Um, you're maybe you're used to being numbed out. You know, um, it really hurts, but I I um, really need to. Um, it's been a long time, and I've uh, really been neglect neglectful of this. But what I really value is, you know, I'm getting back to that and saying, um, even though I would love to, I really cannot keep you know, keep doing and then, you know, answer that, um, you know, at, loosen up sort of the um, emotional sort of knots that oftentimes keep people doing the wrong thing again and again and realizing that the Dr. Jekyll and Hyde, meaning that the, when the narcissist ego, um, when their ego cup is, uh, is being, um, pet, you know, stroking their ego or whatever it is, and they're looking as if, you know, and then if people that are feeding in as if, if you find that you don't want to be acting from a hollow shell or um, you're not sort of um, really digging the treatment um, that you are receiving on a flip side and it's not correcting, meaning that person doesn't have the empathy to go, oh man, like, I'm sorry, that was, that was, I was uh, having a hard time. I, I was upset by this, you know, if the, you know, the narcissist, they're really not gonna, you know, um, go there. They don't really sort of, that's sort of just like a seller that they're not going to go in and they don't like to go there. They don't like to, um, have these sort of situations. They just want everything perfect, uh, pristine, um, you know, the, you know, what, what it is that they're into. Um, it's okay to be real and to not, be looking at a constant, um, and you know, have a sort of an in, 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 in internal um, and eternal understanding. Really look to, um, I would say, 
negotiate that within and rekindle and connect that within because you'll be able to see and then be responsive to yourself. And oftentimes you need to get very quiet with yourself or um, some quiet with the drama if it's really throwing you off. And you'll know when you're sort of going into those extremes. Find your boundaries of where is the sacred, you know, and the, the nostalgic and the meaningful. And how can you do that where it's not too much overdone or underdone, where it's just right. You've got, you've got the finesse. You can do this. Don't fall for the bait and switch and don't, you know, be uh, finding that you have to go uh, regressive or uh, backwards. It's okay to go forwards and on the up and up for yourself, even if it doesn't include a trauma bond type of relationship. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today, and I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and for goodness sake, please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Have a beautiful day. Peace is within, peace around, and look around, be a part with like-minded people and reinforce that. Go to that level and find that little bit today and then again tomorrow.